This is my oil pan and it holds all my oil. This is a rock from the desert and there's a lot of rocks in the desert and they all want to make my oil come out of my oil pan. So today, we got to make some protection to protect my oil pan from these rocks. We're gonna make a skid plate. I can't wait. Huge thanks to eBay Motors for sponsoring this season of Money Pit. We couldn't have done this show without them, and by now, you all know that eBay Motors is the best place to buy or sell your parts and cars. And trust us, we know because we use it to find our E36. I've been talking for weeks about how focused they are on making a secure automotive marketplace for car folk like us. They've got the ability to guarantee the car you're gonna buy is the car you're getting. And I can guarantee that you'll find almost anything you need to get your own Money Pit up and running on eBay Motors. Click the link in the description below and get started today. Now, let me get back to the pit. In case you haven't been paying attention, we recently bought this one stock BMW E36 and we've been modifying it to be a fun rally inspired car that we can rip off road. Now sure, you can drive a stock car off road to some success, but we want this car to be better than that. We want it to be more reliable than that and we want it to look cooler than that. So we've been testing out a bunch of rally inspired modifications over the past few months and finding out whether or not they're worth all the time, money and effort that they take to install. And that's what we're doing today with a DIY skid plate. All right, so you might not think of a skid plate when you think of really cool mods to do to a car, but this, like I said, is supposed to be driven off-road. And off-road, there are a lot of rocks, especially where we're going. And those rocks can get kicked up and smash our undersides, and some of our undersides are pretty important and pretty vital, so I wanna make sure they're protected. So today, we are gonna build some skid plates to protect the engine and its oil pan, and I wanna protect the gas tank because I don't really want that stuff spewing out either. That could uh, blow me up. So today we're gonna use some aluminum and we're gonna make a nice burly skid plate for the whole front basically, including the engine. And I've got some really dense plastic kind of stuff called UHMW that I'm gonna use for the gas tank. There's gonna be a lot of manual labor here, a lot of holding heavy stuff up and tracing things and making templates, a lot of work. So I thought it'd be nice to have an extra set of hands. So I brought a friend along, that's Anthony. Hello? 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 So the first things we're gonna need to do is figure out how we're gonna attach this thing to the car. We're probably gonna have to build some standoffs. There's probably gonna be some welding, some cutting involved. And we're also gonna have to make a template and trace the shape that we wanna make this, probably out of cardboard, so that we can cut it out of this. This will be easy, they do it all the time. Yeah, they do it all the time. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> This is a four foot by four foot sheet of aluminum. It's 3 16 inches thick and it costs about 265 bucks, which is pretty expensive. That's about how much an aftermarket skid plate goes for. The problem I have with aftermarket skid plates is that a lot of them don't really protect the oil pan that well. So I figured we'd buy a big sheet that's a little bit bigger than we need and make one to suit our needs. And there's really nothing on the market for gas tanks, so our quarter inch UHMW costs about 175 bucks. You know, it's cheaper than a whole gas tank. And so we spent a grand total of about $450. Now there's gonna be some elbow grease involved. I don't know what that's worth. It's not cheap, I can tell you that. The grease? The grease. Cardboard, the most handiest fabrication tool of all. We're gonna cut a skid plate out of cardboard. It's a lot easier than taking a first crack at it out of aluminum. We'd probably end up wasting all that money we spent. So we'll make it out of cardboard, then we'll make it out of aluminum. It's gonna go around the front here, kind of wide, and then it'll get a little skinnier and come back inside of the control arms, protect the oil pan, and then it can stop just past the oil pan as far as I'm concerned. We're just making a shape and then ultimately we have to make it again out of metal. As I make it, you know, I'm kind of erring on the side of too big, and we can always cut a little bit more off and just kind of honing in on it. All right, so I'm just gonna pop some holes. We're gonna put riv nuts up in this bar, and I'm just gonna put some holes through the cardboard and make marks in that bar. That way, as long as we make the aluminum piece the same as this cardboard piece, 
our holes will line up. That's how we'll mount up the rear, three holes across. I mean, I probably could have like evenly spaced them, but no thank you, not today. Now we need to do the same thing. We're gonna basically put rib nuts up in the subframe as well and do a couple mounting points here and here. So I gotta get those figured out. How's that look? Oh yeah, we're good. Send it. Okay, we should have some nice marks on the subframe where we'll make bigger holes to install rib nuts later. Now, we could cut this thing out of aluminum, I think. It's time to cut. Look, we got just enough aluminum. Timber! <gasps> All right, now I'm ready to cut this skid plate and I'm gonna use a jigsaw to do it. I've got a metal blade on here and I think this is gonna be basically the most efficient way to get through this quickly and I'll be able to manipulate it pretty well to make the shape that we want. So one of the problems with cutting aluminum is that it gums stuff up, it's kind of soft. And so if you're using a bandsaw or a cutoff wheel or a jigsaw like we're using, you'll often run into aluminum gumming your thing up. And as you can see, we've got this here. We made it about three inches and then the teeth are filled with aluminum. It doesn't come out, the blade quits cutting and it kind of sucks. Ah! A slow blade speed and a slow feed speed have managed to make that last blade last a lot longer. Woo! Voila, she's done. I'm gonna make a knife out of that. You look like a Final Fantasy character. <laughs> that looks like a skid plate. Yes, right here we do have, in theory, a skid plate. Okay, so now that we've got the shape cut out, I'm gonna put the template back on here and we're gonna go ahead and make the holes that we marked out earlier. So we'll put holes in the skid plate, then we'll put riv nuts in the car, and we should be able to mount this thing up as we test fit it. Okay, all our holes are really close, but they don't quite line up by like, very small amount. So I'm just gonna make these holes a little bit bigger in the skid plate, give us a little more wiggle room. We kinda did it. We definitely, totally did it. It's up and I'm not holding it. I mean, that's a skid plate. <laughs> we need to attach it a little bit more. Yeah. But that is a skid plate. All right, so we need to make a brace to mount the front of the skid plate to. So basically all I'm gonna do is make a little foot pad that goes up here. And then we'll weld a tube to it. It'll come down here to another foot pad that'll bolt up to the skid plate. So I'm just measuring right now. I think this is what I'm gonna use for the foot pads. Uh, trying to get a size determined. Okay, these foot pads are gonna be four inches long. Okay. And they're each gonna have two holes in them. This is gonna be one of our braces. I'm gonna go cut this off. It's just shy of eight inches. This is basically gonna be the brace setup. It's gonna be like this and like that. Pretty simple, not too pretty, not too fancy, but it is gonna work. So I'm gonna put the skid plate back up now and make sure that uh, this length is right, that I don't need to shorten this or hopefully not add anything to it. They fit pretty nicely now. I got them shaped up just right. We'll go get started on that gas tank protection. Okay, so the gas tank is on kind of both sides of the car here. Uh, so we're gonna need to make two little panels, one over here-ish and one over here-ish. You know what it is? Template time. 
Okay, so we'll kind of cut in some short sort of shape like this. We'll make a hole here, mount it there. Then once the welder's back up and running, I'll weld a little plate from here, like a little rectangle that hangs over that this will kind of slip into and that we can put holes in and fasten it to. I think that'll work just fine. Okay, I think we're gonna cut these out with that jigsaw again. Put that thing to use. Last time I get to do this. Texas. Okay, Texas 2.0. Clean the fur off this thing and then uh, look at putting them up. That's a satisfying girl. It is time to finish these skid plates up. I'm gonna take this skid plate off and weld up our braces, put some holes in here to mount it to the front bumper and then this will be done. Damn. Welder's a little bit splattery, but that makes sense because we kind of have a hodgepodge of parts holding the tip together. But for this project, that'll be just fine. That'll be strong enough. So now I need to, I forgot I need to make these holes a touch bigger for the hardware that's gonna go through them. And then we can add the holes to the skid plate, put it back up, and look at our work and marvel at its glory. All right, we're out in the paint booth now. I'm gonna give these a quick hit of Krylon Color Max paint and primer in flat black. Just to keep these things from rusting. That is pretty much a skid plate. Now I'm gonna put some hardware through the front of the plate and the bottom of the bumper right here. I already made a couple holes, put some more hardware through it, and then the front's done done. Almost there. Solid. Solid. <laughs> All right, let's see if we're gonna have to trim this thing anymore or if it just fits. Now, if you take a peek, the skid plate does line up pretty well with the fender well, or the fender liner. So that gives me hope that we're gonna be okay. Well, it works at full droop. Oh yeah, that works. And the higher it goes, the better it'll work. So uh, as long as the other side's as good as this, we're looking all right here. Now I will say, the only thing that I really don't like about this skid plate that we just made is uh, this exposed hardware. Um, 
You know, if I bash one of these on a rock and just shear the head off, then it's kind of going to be a pain to get out. But shouldn't be too bad since all these are connected by either these braces or rib nuts that I've put in. So if I do break a bolt off, I can just drill the whole rib nut out and insert a new one. Um, but I think it would be better if we recessed this hardware so it was hidden, or I was thinking about just kind of cutting some chunks of aluminum out to make little kind of shields for the hardware. Maybe if I break a bunch of hardware, then I'll add hardware guards to the skin plate. Not bad. A flag isn't just a decoration. A flag represents an idea, a community of people and the qualities for which they stand. And if you believe in Donut's message that everyone can like cars, then what better way to show it than with a badass donut flag? Hang it in your garage, hang it in your bedroom, or watch it wave proudly on your at-home flagpole. I'd say they're available for only $19.98, which is so much cheaper than $20. So get your donut flag right now at donutmedia.com and let the world know that you believe that cars are for everybody. All right, mission accomplished. We got some skid plates on the front of the E36 and we've got the gas tank covered from damage. This thing's ready for a beating from underneath. So the next thing we need to do is go back to the desert and test out all our mods and see if they were all worth it. See if we can beat the last time that I set. But that's gonna be for the next episode. So thanks for coming to this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two, had some fun. I know I did. So until next time, you can go follow me on Instagram at Zach Job and follow Donut at Donut Media. And I'll see you guys in two weeks. Goodbye.